Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark of the Mad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 2018 comedy drama, A Bread Factory Part 1 for the Sake of Gold. Mr. Hollywood. Mr. Living the Dream. <laughs> that's that's too kind. I wish that were true. I, I really do, but but that that's way way too kind. Thank you. Thank you very much for saying that. I thought this movie was hilarious. I thought the acting was spectacular, especially from the two leads, Dorothea and Greta. I thought their timing was impeccable. I thought the story was fantastic. <laughs> There's so much comedy in this movie that is my kind of comedy, where it's subtle, where it's not like over the top. People say things that are really funny, but you have to really be listening and understanding <laughs> what's going on to really get the humor. And I thought this movie just hit out of the park. Now, uh, a Bread Factory Part 1 has 100% fresh rating on, from the critics of Rotten Tomatoes and a 62% fresh rating from the audience. I'm currently reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rating from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't understand the 38% of people who didn't like this movie. Maybe they thought the pacing was a little bit slow. It can seem a little bit slow. There are some stuff in like the middle that are fillers. I mean, there's a lot of really funny comedy in this movie. There's a lot of really funny uh, one-liners. There's a lot of really f funny situations that are happening. But I could see how uh, there's stuff kind of going on um, around that, those funny moments that might seem a little bit slow, that might seem like they, they don't go anywhere or they're kind of ridiculous. But all in all, I thought this movie was incredibly uh, well done. So this movie is about a comedy art space held up by Thor Dorothea and Greta, who are a lesbian couple. Now they've been running this art space for 40 years, but a celebrity couple, um, who are performance artists from China, build an enormous complex down the street. Now, they are trying to build this enormous complex, but they need kind of the city's okay. They need um, the town to meet and to have a vote and to say whether or not they're going to allow this big complex art space come into their city. Now, Dorothea and Greta, of course, are very concerned about this because they don't want the competition. They feel like the kids are going to suffer, that it's going to bring in the wrong type of people. Um, it's going to only attract like big actors and big actresses, and it's going to lose that kind of community space that children have to where they can come in and try to make something of themselves where maybe they wouldn't have had that chance before, and they're worried that they're going to lose all of this. So they kind of go around to the different people who have a vote in this situation. They don't necessarily try to convince them to vote. They do kind of try to convince them to vote on their behalf, but they're just kind of trying to feel it out to see where people are. And it's really, really, really funny. Now, the first bit of humor for me was they have a projectionist who works at this, uh, their little art space. And he's like nine years old and he is very good at his job. He's very professional. And at some point in the movie, he decides he doesn't want to do this anymore. He wants to like be a child and not work. And it just devastates them because he's such a great employee and they love what he's doing and they understand it. But but they, it's hard for them to let let him go, and I think that that whole scene, that whole thing, is really hilarious. Now, as they're interviewing these people who have votes in the town to see how they're going to vote and to kind of get a feeling of why they're going to vote the way they are, it's very apparent that some of them have no idea actually what this uh, Chinese um, complex is going to do. So it's called May Ray because the, the, the two people who are trying to start it are called May Ray and they really have no idea what May Ray is and a lot of them really don't, don't seem to know what the community art space is at all. They're just kind of voting because they like the idea of having this big complex. They like the idea of bringing maybe tourism and excitement into their town, and they really have no idea what any of it's about. It's very apparent when they interview this one guy, which which to me was a hilarious scene. It's a, it's a very funny line in the movie where he says, um, our children need to learn Chinese. So I think this is a very important building for them to have. I think it's a very important program for them to have, and I think they're going to learn a lot. And then, uh, um, I don't remember if it's Dorothea or Greta, she says, I don't think May Ray plans to teach them Chinese. <laughs> 
he's, and he says, yeah, but they're going to have all kinds of cultures come in. And she says, well, we have actors from all over the world come into our area too. Like we have people from China, Japan, like we have, we have a multicultural building here too. And his only response is, did you see the size of that complex? Wow. What a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hilarious because he has no idea what he's talking about and she has very valid arguments and her valid arguments are not being taken seriously because this guy doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. Now there's <laughs> probably the funniest the funniest scene in this movie for me, the best part of the whole movie. There's this guy who they, they have this town meeting and they have people come up as like guest speakers and speak about why they think that May Ray should be allowed into the town or why they think that May Ray should not be allowed in the town. Now, the people from May Ray's side, they bring up this guy and he starts <laughs> telling this story about a May Ray performance he saw. And he's giving like this, this critic version of it. And it's such like a critic like version of something where he he takes one very specific thing that he saw and he just makes it so detailed that it's just it's hilarious and it doesn't make any sense so he's talking about it's it was called body laundry and he's talking about a basket that was dragged to a river and he's like what could be more chinese than a river i mean beautiful everything about this is beautiful and then we see stains on the clothes he gives, a, he gives a funny analysis of the stains and the water being used to clean the clothes. And he talks about how this guy took off his clothes so he can wash it in the river. And he's like, nudity. What's more Chinese than nudity? It's like, what, is he ta what are you talking about? And it's like he doesn't really understand um, what he's criticizing, like what he's critiquing. He, he's just making stuff up and he's giving so much emotion and passion into what he's making up that it really sounds like he knows what he's talking about. But it's really funny because it's just so, it's so ridiculous. And he goes on and on and on about the scene uh, at a river where this guy's washing his clothes. And it's like, what is the rest of this play about? It can't just be about a guy washing clothes in the river, but it was it was really funny. And then finally, like I think the really big scene of funny for me was there's this famous actor who gets up to talk about how he was impacted by May Ray, and he says like when he was young, his parents died and his dog died like on the same day, <laughs> on the same day, and. He says, like, where is a guy to go when your mom and your dad die on the same day? And he's like, May Ray took me in. They taught me how to be an actor. They, they, they acted like parents towards me. And he says that this happened when he was, like, 16. And now he's, like, in his maybe late 20s, early 30s. And he's talking about how they took him in and how they were where they were really good to him and how the community needs something like this because this is where he had when he was a child when he was sixteen. And then we go back to like Dorothy or Greta. I, I, I don't know which was which, I should probably know. Um, but we go back to to one of them and she's all like, Well, that was an amazing story considering May Ray was founded like three years ago and <laughs> you're talking about something that happened to you like fourteen years ago. That's that's amazing. And they never like refer to it. They never talk about it again. But it, it was it was hilarious because it's really like this. You can tell he's BSing the story because like when does your parents and your dog die at the same time? And he doesn't even like say how it happened. He doesn't give any details. He's not emotional during the whole thing. He's actually a really bad actor. But when they when they introduce him, he's won like Oscars or like Grammy or like not Grammys, but he's won like. Oscars or something. He's like a, a really famous actor, um, but he's he's not that great, uh, which was hilarious. I thought this movie was funny. It's not only funny. There's actually some really good acting scenes in this movie too, where I think they're putting on like a play of Hecuba or something, or they're trying. They're getting ready to put on this play, and they're rehearsing and there's one monologue in this movie. I don't remember who gives it. It's like a woman who gives this monologue and it's beautiful. It's absolutely fantastic. It's amazing. I thought she did a, a beautiful job acting. The movie is hilarious. Like I said, there, there, there's parts in the middle where there, there's not the laughs that maybe they were going for. It seems like it drags a little bit where they, where they start to tell story instead of trying to be funny. Um, but other than that, I thought this movie was great. And I don't understand, like I said, I don't understand why 38% of people dislike this movie uh, because I thought it was very enjoyable. 
Now, I will say it's a two-hour movie, and then the second, so there's a Bread Factory Part 2, which is also 100% fresh, which is also, I think, like a little over two hours. So if you're trying to invest yourself in watching both movies, that could be a bit of a drag because you have to watch like four hours of the story that is told kind of slow, but is hilarious at times. Um, and I would say, I, I will, I'm will. i going to review the second movie after this because it's 100% fresh. The second movie to me was not as good as the first movie. It was not as funny. It was not as impactful. The story wasn't as great, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But if you're, if you're trying to watch the whole thing and you're like maybe looking at the big picture about both movies combined, I could see maybe how someone wouldn't like this movie. Maybe they thought that combined they were too long they were too um they were too boring um but i thought this movie standalone bread factory part one for the sake of gold was quite good it was i had no expectations going into it uh, i had never heard of it before but i thought it, it it really did um wow me in a lot of ways especially with how funny it was i don't know it doesn't say it's a mockumentary it's almost like it could be a mockumentary on this type of like community art space this type of community scene and the whole idea of like the um big conglomerate coming in it doesn't say that it was but i, I thought it was funny uh, it was enjoyable. I would watch it again if uh, someone, for some reason, wanted to watch it with me. I would for sure watch both of these movies. <coughs> Excuse me. So I give it an 8.5 out of 10. I hope you join me for my next review when I review the second one, A Bread Factory Part 2. Thank you. Have a great day.